Boston, it's always been music is the, the main form of entertainment. And people come out and support it, you know. The words are used, but it's really eclectic here. There's a lot of just all kinds of music, you know, blues and, and rock and roll and roots rock and rockabilly. I don't think there's any city in America that has all of the diverse cultures in it doing music that compose all the different art forms of America's music. And here you can find almost any kind of music you can imagine. In terms of, of the uh, social makeup of Boston, it's where hippies and rednecks met the first time in a social situation and didn't kill each other. <laughs> it's really per capita, you know, it's amazing how many people go out and see music here. And it's affordable to see it. I love those party faces and those pretty party lights. Junior Brown is probably one of the people who I'm most impressed with, and he's certainly no secret by now. Everybody in the music business, at least, is hip to Junior Brown's music. Junior Brown, wild guitar player, he's kind of like a Jimi Hendrix country guy or something. He's like funny. I don't know if he tries to be, but he's really funny. I was by your side on a carnival ride. Now it's a roller coaster, flashing, crashing, party nightmare. It's called a get steel, yeah, and it's... Uh... It's a combination of uh, electric guitar and steel guitar because I've always wanted to play uh, those two instruments while I sang. Those party lights lit up so bright just like a Christmas tree. When I see those party lights come on, the party's over for me. I've traveled uh, many different places. Uh, since, since I started playing professionally in, in uh, the late 60s. And uh, Austin has always uh, really been, uh, I'd say, the, probably the warmest place uh, personally that I've ever been. People have always been so nice to me here. My name's Mark Rubin with Bad Livers. And uh, the next up's Don Walzer, who plays pure Texas country music. Yodeling, fiddles and steels like you're not gonna hear anywhere else but Texas. I love you. When I got started yodeling, I, I couldn't find enough yodeling songs. You know, in the music stores, because hardly anybody did it, even back then. So I had to start writing my own material to get any extra ones. <laughs> Tease me about playing a whole lot here, and uh, but you can play down on Sixth Street, and you got one crowd, and you play uh, on in South Austin, you get another crowd, and and they're all your friends. They're all the same kind of folks, except they go different places. Well, say, are you from Texas? That's what I'm wanting to know. Cause if we're both from Texas, boys, let's bundle up our clothes and go. Oh, I don't know too many of the top 40 country stuff, uh, bands. I, I play top 40, but it's 40 years old. <laughs> Each year we spend over 20 million dollars picking up trash along our Texas
Texas highways. Messing with Texas isn't just an insult to the Lone Star State. It's a crime. Don't mess with Texas. People are comfortable to go out. It's not, they don't feel like, for one thing, you don't feel like you have to dress up, you know, and look like a big superstar and that kind of stuff. Uh, Austin's just always been a good, uh, a good music town. Austin just likes to have uh, big parties, outdoor parties. pleasure playing with him for a while. He, is, in my opinion, is one of the most powerful live performers, as well as being a great songwriter. I mean, he's just amazing. Uh, one of the best performers I've ever seen in my life. Life just passed by on the slide. I had to live mine old. It's been a cold, dark, lonesome night on the white cliffs of gold. town called Lubbock, which was a lot of music came from there, but uh, we had to go somewhere to play it, you know. Uh, Austin was always the live music place, you know. The most important part of Austin's music is what happens in the clubs. It's from the 80 some odd venues that have music every every weekend. The clubs here are really open and one night you'll hear you'll hear a blues act and the next day country or folk or something. So I think that's another uh, element that really makes it really friendly. Uh, there are lots of clubs, lots of places to play. Uh, that general level of respect for musicians in this town is amazing. Omar, like uh, Casper Rawls and uh, Webb Walder and uh, some of the commandos, they came here from Mississippi because they saw the scene here and they wanted to be a part of it and their music fit here. Since Omar's been here, you know, he's done some of the most, uh, uh, some of the hardest rock and blues you ever want to hear. Creedence Clearwater Revival, of course all the blues guys like Jimmy Reed, Muddy Waters, and I loved rockabilly too. Carl Perkins was a big influence. So I just kind of put everything together and hopefully made a style out of it. Uh, a lot of the audience can be quite enthusiastic. 
even if there's only a small crowd somewhere, they usually, you know, are, are love it a lot and really feel the music. <laughs> it's a crazy place. Uh, I don't know. It's just really friendly atmosphere. You just come in. It's real intimate, and and you can get loud and play rock and roll and do whatever you want. And and it, it's I, I don't know. I just like the place a lot. I play all types of music, and uh, and that's what I'm about. You know, I, I it's sort of sort of countryish with rock and roll and. I actually took a cross country trip, drove through Austin, and uh, I, and I thought it was beautiful here. And, 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 uh, it's a town that, you know, if if you're ready, you know, if you're ready, it's accepting, and if you're not. You can work your way toward being ready. One television show that's captured the magical mix of Austin's music is also one of the medium's longest running. I'm talking Austin City Limits. Week after week on a classy but uncluttered set, some of music's best and brightest have cleared their calendars to be part of this uniquely Austin show. There are a lot of reasons that Austin City Limits has uh, been so successful, and now that we're getting ready to celebrate our 20th anniversary, I guess we must be doing something right. A lot of it, though, is just the music. The show is driven by the music. You don't have a host. You don't have elaborate uh, staging or lighting effects. And so I think the key to it is the fact that we've been able to present good music and a good mix of different kinds of music over the years, a little something for everybody. Can't you see it's meant to be and all I want is you The idea came back in 1974 when the, the Austin music scene, so to speak, was really just getting off the ground. That was about the year that Willie Nelson moved back to Texas from Nashville. And when people like Asleep at the Wheel, Michael Murphy, Jerry Jeff Walker, Rusty Weir, Marsha Ball, all of these people were just beginning to kind of coalesce. And the so-called cosmic cowboy or progressive country music scene uh, got its name. And so it seemed like a perfectly good idea at the time to, to try to do a, a music show from Austin. And Willie offered to be the, the guinea pig, so to speak. He was the, the original talent on the first pilot episode for the show.
This history, uh, Willie's show was so sensational that public television bought the idea and funded the first series, and we've been around ever since. Kelly Willis moved here from Virginia. I think one of the reasons Kelly moved here, if I do say so, is probably from having seen Austin City Limits and getting the impression that Austin was this great music town, a great place for people to come and ride and, and play live in the clubs. And uh, Austin City Limits has probably influenced a lot of musicians that way. And pick up the tempo just a little and take it on. Take it all. Thank you. Thank you very much. I always like to tell people I came a long way in my life. I was born a mile up the road as far as I got back into town. That was back in 1964. And I came underneath that big old oak tree out there and I kind of visualized the place like no other. And when I got it built, I named it the Broken Spoke. It was born on the south side of Austin. Broken Spoke with its name. It'll always be a winner. It's destined for fame. I built it to look like the 30s and the 40s, and then after like 30 years of business, most people think I've been here like 75 years, you know, and they, they come across the old dirt parking lot, and they see an old red rustic old building, and they say, man, this is really, this is really it. If you like waltzes and focus, who stands Cotton Eye Jones? Deep in the heart of Texas, there's a place that you should go. It ain't fancy, but it's country. Wear your jeans and your cowboy hats Just cross that old river Cause that's where it's at I think it's uh, just about right now. Some people, they want me to raise the ceiling, you know, and I said, no, I said, I hate to change anything, but I'd be afraid to change anything because we get people from all over the world, you know, and and they filmed it here and they televised it here. and. Uh, yeah. You know, Bob Wills was the first big star I ever had at Broken Spoke, and I, I booked him here in 1966, and 67, and 68. It was Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys, and I'm just fortunate that I do have, you know, like a, a pair of his boots right here, those are Bob Wills boots. Then I have his cowboy hat over here, and um, Rosetta Wills, his daughter, comes out here, and she told me, she said, well, I'm going to get you something of my dad's, you know, and I said, man, it's going to be great. I, I wonder what it'll be, you know, so here she comes up with this, this thing here, it's all wrapped up, you know, and, and so I, I said, what is it? So she unrolls it, and so now I'm the only person that's got a 50-year-old, half-smoked, Bob wheel cigar that's been saved in their family for the last 50 years. With you like waltzes and pokins, two steps cotton I Jones, deep in the heart of Texas, there's a place that you should go. Yes, deep in the heart of Texas, there's a place Yeah. Alvin Crow uh, come from Oklahoma City too and lived out in West Texas. Not only is he a good singer and a songwriter, but he's a tremendous, great fiddle player. And he loves Western swing music and he plays more Western swing than he does anything else. <laughs>
I think the broken spoke is here. One of the reasons it's here is because it's endured. You know, it's stayed the same. They haven't really gone with the times. You won't really see much line dancing at the broken spoke, even though supposedly that's the biggest dance craze in America. I have yet to see a line dance at the broken spoke. It was there I found beside the elbow in Chan Money Strange and the blue up above. A moonlit path that only we could know still ears my broken song of life. I more or less cut my teeth in dance halls that Bob Wills played at, so it, it, he's always been there. You know, he's always been a, a big entity in my music, whether I liked it or not. If I didn't like Bob Wills, he would still be huge in my life. So, but, but I do. reason this Austin music scene thrives is found right here on the University of Texas campus, which just happens to be my alma mater. The student population is over 50,000, and a great number discover, become hooked, and spread the word on the music. And each year, this cycle continues as a new group of freshmen comes to town only to fall under the influence of Austin's musical spell. This is the best times, yours and mine, we can never forget. How blessed we are. The single most important factor in the growth of Austin's music scene as well as its industry is the fact that there's 50,000 college students here. People from all over the world come to University of Texas. And so all those musical styles converge into this one city. With the University of Texas having 50,000 students, every year, come hell or high water, there's 10,000 kids that have never been away from home, mm -hmm. never seen live music, never been in bands, that all of a sudden want to check it out. So Austin music scene will always be vibrant and, and lively because of it. Thank you very much. Honored to be here on the new Mary Connor TV network right here in Austin, Texas by the University of Texas Hook'em Horns Cactus Club. Oh, lordy me. We usually play over in South Austin. We're not quite this used to this much education. The Geese and Slaws are the first band to make it out of Austin nationally. Uh, they go back to before Johnny Carson started The Tonight Show. They were on national television. Because you can do your own music here, you know. You don't have to rely on um, doing other people's music because you have the audiences here that will accept it. Flipped through the dial and after a while, a commercial came on that made me smile. It said, learn to dance, learn to move. Call 1-900, you just can't lose. Well, it didn't take me long. I jumped right up and I ran to the phone. Operator said, can I help you, sir? And this is what I said to her. Help, I'm white and I can't get down. Got two left feet planted on the ground. I need some help if I do the town. Help, I'm white and I can't get down. Well, first of all, I have to say Austin has just been really gracious. I feel like I got a warm hug when I moved here in. 
This is the best of times, some say the worst of times. Guess it all just depends which glass you're drinking from. This is our only chance to reverse a dance that was started so long ago. This is the best of times, look beyond the signs. Don't let yourself be scared, don't let them make you numb. This is the final day, each and every day. We can return to the love that we keep running from. The way I think of an Austin audience is really kind of like an extension of a big family. Um, you know, especially when you're playing something as intimate as the Cactus Cafe, they're really eager to listen and to be a part of the show. See you down, I wanna pick you up. I wanna give you hope and remind you of the best of times. First time you hear his voice, you say, "Now there's somebody who's who's going to make it. There's somebody who does, you know, who who sounds like himself. You know, he could do pop, he could do rock, he could do country, he can do folk. But uh, I guess what he does is uh, is, is Aust you know, very intelligent Austin-based music." Half of this morning and most of last night, I've been taking tally on the last years of my life. I've been pretty righteous, but God only knows A couple of calls were not even close At least my indiscretion Was sweeter than most All those loving arms Sweet, sweet loving arms Seemed like the coolest place to to, uh, to be, you know. So ever since I was I was young, I wanted to live here, and so I came up here. Uh, actually, I went to school here on this these hallowed halls of the University of Texas. Well, I was 21. Somewhere you have to, you know, find some place where you can stop, you know, where you call home. And uh, I, when I stop, I like to stop here. I just was going to stay for six months or so, and that was five and a half years ago. I just fell in love with it. It's a great place, and it's mostly, I think, that small town attitude. Lots of parks in Austin. More parks per capita than any place else in the country. Hills. Hills. Hill country. Yeah, a lot of fishing. Mm -hmm. There's there's a, a real vibrant the theater scene here, a lot of plays to go see. There's a comedy troupe called Esther's Follies mm -hmm. that have been together for forever. So, you know, there's all kinds of things. It's yeah. a great place to live. I just like the environment, uh, the rivers along in here and the way they've uh, laid out the city. Uh, I like to come down here and, and run around and go swimming in Barton Springs. and. A lot of nature lovers in this town. Bunch of tree huggers in this town, baby. <laughs> we love them.
you very much. Something to think about if you throw trash on Texas highways. When I'm on 6th Street, if I go down to 6th Street just to take in some music, I'll see five different types of bands and five clubs right next door to each other. Punk rock, acid rock, I mean, everything is on this one street. And it's on 6th Street in Austin. And my dad would take me out to the 6th Street to let me hear the, the level of musicianship. At a very young age, he wanted me to see how good you needed to be to get to the certain level that these guys are playing the bars. called the Bad Livers. And I happen to be very good friends with one of them, Mark Rubin, the upright bass player. He's also known as Little Elvis. So please, enjoy yourself while watching the Bad Livers. I used to work in the iron ore mine and sold a patch of paint. But now I stumble and feel the way and nobody knows my name. The old folks shuffle with a sad Unusual. I feel like in a lot of ways, stylistically, we're sort of orbiting on an asteroid around the solar system. We sort of live in our own place. We record here in Austin, and we tour quite extensively, but we tour as, mostly as our own headlining band. The crowd has been kind of milked down because they're sort of spoiled, because they can see world-class bands playing every night of the week for free. Four bands, some of the, as I mentioned, some of the clubs have four and five bands a night. You know, most of them have at least two or three bands a night for no cover. And these, these are guys that put out major label albums and tour almost constantly and things. So it's a pretty good scene here right now. The Bad Livers are my favorite band because they're fun. They're great to dance to. They have strong ideals about God and life and fun and music. And I really have a good time with their shows. The music means a lot to my soul because that's what I grew up listening to. honest see and uh, and the folks that play it around here don't do it for the money it's a very unique place to make music and I think that people truly honor the written word down there and are interested in music for music's sake first commerce is incidental and it's not about money I mean we'd all like to have, you know we'd all like to complain about the unmanageable wealth but it's not about that it's about for playing music it's a loose environment that lends itself to a little more creativity. It's not hampered by any uh, restrictions put on by, you know, the major uh, music industry thing. Shake it, baby, step back. You step back and whirl across the big band floor. How to sweetheart and embrace the world once more. Pick out the jam. Diverse 
just guys that like uh, the same music, I guess. Uh, yeah. A combination yeah. of 50s through, you know, the punk stuff. Well, in 1914, we took a little trip along the town, Jackson, down a mighty Mississippi. Took a little bacon and we took a little bait. Got the bloody British in a town on New Orleans. Now the fire was gone, and the British came for coming. Was now many years, it was a while ago. Yo, fire once more, and they began to run it. Down the Mississippi to the government. The live music scene here is, uh, of course, what's cooking on the street. That's what keeps us coming back. That's what keeps them uh, asking us back. And, uh, yeah, Austin, Austin is a live music town. It's the live music capital of the world, and uh, we're part of it, and we're happy to be part of it. Pray for him, brother. Pray for him. Don't let, don't let, don't let. Don't let, 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 let. No, no, let, 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 let. Monty has always just been bursting at the seams with incredible talent. He eats, sleeps, and breathes the stuff. He's, music is his life. And Monty is definitely going to be a big star someday, maybe soon. You know, you go see him play live. He just, he's really honest and true in his music. And uh, he writes these songs that you swear they were written 30 years ago. Well, now I'm young and I'm for real. And that's a real fun way to be. I said I'm young and I'm for real And I feel real fine way to be, be, be Well, I, I'm young, I'm for sure And I feel real fine way to be I want to find a young girl that is so nice to me The way they laugh, the way they say It makes my heart go hooting a lane The way they laugh and sing, just make my heart go tingling, tingling, the way that I, I, I say, 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 makes my heart go tingling, 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 tingling. The funny thing is, I, I didn't really appreciate the Austin music scene until I started touring around when I was about 16 years old in my first band, and then when I went around and saw the rest of the, the country. I realize how special Austin is, that they would even let a kid uh, 14, 15 years old start up a band and uh, take it seriously. Honey, I just can't resist And from the first time that I kissed you I know I've never felt this way before I used to have the dream about you Spend the lonely nights without you I don't need those dreams anymore So hold me, show me That you never let go of me Cause I don't know a thing about love hey! If uh, somebody is uh, doing something that's contrived or pretentious Austin will chew them up and spit them out But if they're doing something that they love Austin will give them a chance The way they laugh it makes my heart go between the lane The way they laugh and sing Just makes my heart go Sing a lane, pain, pain The way that I, I, I Say, say, say It makes my heart go between the lane Oh, so sing a lane, sing a lane Sing a lane, sing a lane
Kelly Willis is another artist I've been lucky enough to see come here with, you know, essentially nothing and develop a style based on not only what she had inside of her, but all the things that were going around around going on around her in the clubs. You know, she's turned into to a tremendous singer in, you know, just, uh, what, five, six years? We like the music that came out of here, like uh, the Little Roy Brothers and the Tailgaters and the Thunderbirds and uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan. You know, we, we just really dug all that music and, and uh, we figured if they were all going on down here, this had to be a cool place to be. So we just picked up and moved down. Everybody was just living this lifestyle that seemed so cool to me, you know, so like, you know, the musician, you know, bohemian kind of lifestyle, uh -huh. but I really, I just really dug that. When I first made sure that's what I noticed the most. Everybody legitimately is pulling for one another here because Austin isn't about being famous or being a star. It's about making good music. Yeah. It's encouraging. I know. wasn't through. <laughs> <laughs> and it's about having your own voice. It's encouraging when you see somebody, you know, see something really good and not compromise. It kind of makes you feel like you can do it. So everybody kind of supports each other. In that. I look at all the other guys and how jealous they become. They want to know the reason why you are the only one. Living in Austin is a big part of my music, and, and it keeps me uh, from compromising. And I just like living here. You know, it's really it's important for my well-being to live here. I'm a seventh-generation Texan, and I'll be damned if I'm going to be the first one to leave. <laughs> Didn't know that love could be so strong. You are the only one. Yeah. music scene here in Austin is just about as varied as it gets and best of all it's honest and it comes from the heart so here's a sneak peek at part two of Rose Joe the Austin music scene I am what I am cause I ain't what I used to be heading into Austin just to see what's up drinking something risky from a Dixie cup he wants a good life a job and a wife and some Now I know the truth. Someone paint me a blue sky. I wanna go home to the Armadillo. Country music from Amarillo and Napoli. I don't care what song, and I knew I was right. Rolling down the highway to the neon night. 
Well, we'll see you next time from right here in Austin. Until then, let the road be your friend. I'm Chuck Long. Goodbye. I think that these are the like the golden years, or at least you know, maybe look back on as the golden years of Boston music. Up to midnight.